What's up guys? Today we're here with Josh Emmett. Josh is a UFC featherweight fighter, currently ranked number three in the UFC. He's 18 and two. He's got six knockouts, two by submission, and he's currently on a five fight win streak. Josh's next fight is hopefully for the title so he can raise that featherweight belt. Today we're gonna dive into success, mindset, habits, and ultimately his chase to the top of the UFC and the dream that he's been chasing his whole life. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy. Man, thanks for coming. Yeah, of course. It's I appreciate great to be here. it. Yeah, good to have you here. I mean, to start off, I want to hear about your childhood. Like, what was growing up like in, in the Emmett household? Were you playing sports all your life? You know, kind of what was motivating you as a kid to, to keep going and to have that dream of being big one day? Yeah. Um, you know, my mom was a, a single mother, so she, she raised my older brother and I. Um, it was tough, that's for sure. You know, she, she worked two jobs. She's like the, the sweetest lady, um, did everything she possibly could to provide for my, my older brother and I. Um, but yeah, yeah, I always played sports, you know? So it's like I grew up playing everything. And, and I was like, I was good at everything. Um, you know, I played little league, I played soccer, football, uh, baseball. And then I didn't really get into wrestling until I was like in middle school. And then that's kind of where I, you know, I excelled at, at wrestling. And, you know, I was a small kid too. So it's like, I always had a dream of being, doing two things. So it was either being a police officer or a professional athlete. But I was thinking about like football or basketball. Cause like fighting really wasn't, there was like boxing of course was around, but like MMA wasn't really around when I was, you know, a young child. So, um, you know, as I, I got older and, uh, you know, I, I stopped growing and I was like, basketball and football was definitely out of the mix. But uh, yeah, so it's, you know, that's kind of my up, upbringing. I'm from Sacramento and um, yeah, had, had a, you know, good, good childhood and, but it was tough, you know, it was definitely, it was definitely tough. How'd you get into wrestling? Someone, someone asked you to just come out one day, was there a coach or? It was actually one of my really good friends, uh, his father. So I, I played baseball, like growing up, little league and TOCs and all stars and all this stuff. And, and, um, it was, uh, my friend, Paul, his father, Bob Avery. So he, uh, he, he knew how athletic I was. He was the coach for my, my little league teams and stuff like that. And so they came from a wrestling family. So my friend, Paul was the youngest of three boys. He wrestled his, his older brothers both wrestled. And then, so his father is like, you're wrestling this year. Basically told me that I'm wrestling and he just knew that I would, I would do well, you know, because I was like, I was a small athletic kid, strong kid. I also come from like, when I was really young, I, I come from like a, a tumbling background. So I was like doing acrobatics and stuff like that because uh, when, when I was younger, my mom wanted my older brother and I to, to pick a sport. And since he was older, he chose Taekwondo. I was gonna do that as well, but we were always fighting at home. So she's like, they'll just fight you know, at, at the, the, the studio and then they'll bring it home and fight. So I had to find something else and, and she kind of found that for me and I, and I did that. So then it, you know, I think that was like my foundation and my, my base to my athletic career. Um, and so, yeah, Bob told me I'm wrestling. I went out there and uh, I did really well. I, I loved it. I didn't know a whole lot, but I was just a strong little kid. I would head and arm kids and I, I pinned everybody and I ended up my first year going like 14 and 0 and winning these two tournaments. Um, and then I was, I was kind of hooked. So I wrestled in eighth grade and then went on to, you know, wrestle in high school. And, you know, I, I was as a freshman, the only one to make the varsity team and, and, and did really well there and just kind of, you know, loved, loved wrestling and um, things as well. I played football in high school and I was playing baseball, but then it, it came down to, um, you know, I just wanted to like kind of focus all my time and energy into wrestling um, because it was an individual sport. Um, and I, I kind of just took off with that. Yeah, I think a lot of people tell you, you got to find your love in life. You know, you got to do what, what gets you ticking. And that's usually kind of at the intersection of, of an interest and obviously what you're good at. So that for you probably was wrestling, but the sport of wrestling and MMA wasn't really a big thing when you were growing up. So what what was that driving factor that you wanted to take that further, even though 
later down the line there really wasn't solidified where there's a financial incentive or, or a title can you know incentive so what kept you going to chase it yeah and it's like um so when i was in high school it was like i feel like i'm older but it, like in 99 so like i was a freshman 99 and 2000 so that's when like one of my best friends and i we were watching the ufc but as i was like a younger child it wasn't really a thing or i just wasn't really like too familiar with it so we were watching like the pay-per-views like in high school and and this is before it was mainstream like it was before like i think that was 2003 or 2000 anywhere from 03 to 05 when like the ultimate fighter was on and it was like bonner and and uh, forrest griffin fought and that kind of blew up the sport and made it mainstream so i was always a fan of the ufc and mixed martial arts and since i wrestled i would watch these fights and at the time, it's like, you, you see it like now, like at people's houses or in a bar, I'm like, oh, I could do this, I could beat these guys, but in reality, I would've got killed, you know what I mean, like uh, back then. And then I just went on to like finish my, my high school career. I wrestled at Sac City College, a junior college here, and then um, went on to uh, wrestle at the four-year level in, in uh, the Bay Area, Menlo College. And, and it was all kind of part of my plan, you know, I. Uh, Re, like rewinding back to 2005 when I was wrestling at Sac City Uriah came into our our like meet and he was handing out flyers um, that he was open his gym you know Uriah favors ultimate fitness that was on I 16th downtown and I was like as soon as the season's up I'm gonna I'm gonna go sign up at the gym because I, I always wanted to give this a shot so I like after you know the season was up I went in there I paid for you know six months up front and I was just taking classes and you know just kind of seeing what it was about and then about like three months later he came up to me and he has an eye for talent look at all the people that he's kind of like recruited or built up to world champions or number one contenders or um, and he asked if I was interested in fighting and I was like yeah that's why I'm here and so he said he, he had seen me like training you know for a handful of months and kind of like uh, kept his eye on me and then he invited me to the the pro practices and so I started to do that a little bit but then I I decided to you know I was getting these offers from different colleges in like the Midwest the East Coast um, even San Francisco State stuff like that I was young I didn't want to go too far from home and so I, I ended up going down to Menlo College on like a recruiting trip. I liked the coaches. I liked that it was close to home. Um, and then that was part of my plan. I'm like, I want to get my degree in case fighting doesn't work out for me. Um, but I'll, I'll get better at wrestling, you know, at the four year level and it'll transition over to, to MMA. And so I, I, I did exactly that. Went down there from 07 to 2010. And then, and then I came back and kind of picked up where I left off and started training for a few months and then and then did a few amateur fights. Oh, that's awesome. I think, you know, a lot of people, they have these longer term goals, but the plan isn't in place. And obviously a plan with or a goal without a plan is just a dream. So what what exactly about that plan? Like what was structured about it in a way that that ultimately led to your success? You know, what habits, what behaviors did you instill in yourself from a young, young kid? to then live it out in college and do the four year plan to then reach it to the, you know, the big leagues. Yeah, I think if like, like you're saying, if you have a dream or a plan, whatever it is, it's like <laughs> you have to be in it for the long haul. Like so many people want like get rich quick things or they want, they just think they can, you know, just hop into whether it's like a, a career or, or whatever it is, a job and they just want to be promoted to the top. And that's not usually how things work. You have to put in the time, you have to be in it for the long haul. And, and with me, it's like, with wrestling and stuff like, you know, I, I placed in the state and in, in uh, junior college, I was ranked number one in the state. I should have won it at nationals. I was, um, you know, I, I was ranked in the, in the country and just had a, a bad national tournament, but it all falls back on me. Like I, I take responsibility for that. I didn't do the things that I should have, you know, I was like, sometimes partying during the season and things like that. So I have regrets from wrestling of why I wasn't a national champion, why I wasn't a state champion. And, and that's why I'm like all in on fighting. And that's why I fight, you know, like, so I don't cut any corners. Like I do everything a hundred percent to the T what I should. And it's, it's, it's all about like discipline and consistency and like just my work ethic uh, to, to achieve greatness and, and be great and become a world champion. And um, 
it's like you can't cheat that, you know, because if, if you're not doing what you should do, it'll show uh, come fight night. You know what I mean? You, you cannot cheat that. Um, so I do like my lifts. I do my outside running. I, I work with one of the best dietitians in the country and uh, I, I follow their plan to the T. And it's like I, I set goals like, you know, and, and I get up every day, even when I don't want to or don't feel like it. I'm sore. I'm beat up. I'm, you know, injured in the past, whatever it is. It's like I just know that my opponent's working and, and I have to do I just know I need to do the right thing even when people aren't looking or aren't around, you know, just for myself to to achieve what I'm trying to. Yeah, no, that aligns with some of the rugby players I talk to around the world at the best, you know, in their country or at the level. And they say, you know, getting up every day when you don't want to and doing the little things has what, you know, separated them from just the good players to the greats. So, I mean, it aligns in, in your sport as well. But I think there's two types of people in this world, those that are motivated by fear of failure and those that are motivated you know, by success and victory. You know, where do you see yourself on those spectrums or is it you know, an intersection in between? Yeah, maybe intersection. You know, it's like a lot of times, it's like I'm always my, my toughest critic and I'm so hard on myself, but it's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I am scared to fail, you know, especially in a fight, you know, it's like, it's like if I, if I lose a fight, I, I would always feel like I let everybody down, like my coaches, my teams, my, my wife, my family and friends, and, and that's not the case. Like they're gonna be there regardless, but it's like, I don't know, it's, it's tough, but then it's like, but then it's just like, I don't know, I, I'm. And there's I, no right or wrong. I mean. Yeah, no, and, and, I, and I fight for like, you know, just like what I'm trying to accomplish too. It's gonna set up like, it's gonna set up my family and, and friends and things like that, and it's just like, it's, you know, a lot of people, you'll hear people talk like, I just want to be the best fighter on the planet. I don't care about the money, this and this. I'm like, I don't think that's the brightest thing. I'm like, I 100% fight for the money. And I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's just something I'm good at. And I'm, I'm in so far. And, you know, um, I don't know. It's just, with, with winning fights and becoming a world champion, it's just like, it will set me up for the future. And, I, and I'm, I'm smart with my money. Maybe if I was you know, younger, if I got in when I was 21 years old, maybe it wouldn't be the best thing, but it's like now that I'm older and more mature, it's like I know what I want, I know what I'm trying to accomplish. And um, yeah, that, that's what, it's like a driving factor, just like my, my family really, like that's why I get up in the morning and do, go do all these things and like just push my body through the absolute brink and, and, and push myself through hell because then it makes the fight easier. No, that's, I mean, I think it's one thing to, people say you can't chase the money, but if, I think if you're chasing money for something that you truly love, that gets you up every day, you want to you inspire other people and make them proud, then I don't see a wrong reason to put a price tag you know, on, a, on an outcome. I think that's totally natural. No, and that's the thing, like even with what, like some of the things that I've gone through, um, it's like I get so many messages from when I've, you know, I had like a lot of injuries in the past from fighting and then I just like I do want to inspire people and give people hope and I get all these like you know like just nice messages people like hey I was going through chemo and I have cancer and I kept thinking about you what you've gone through and you know you're the one that got me through this and I'm like I appreciate that but they're the ones that did it you know but it but it's cool to like give people like inspire people and like it's like cliche but it's like I you can literally do whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it and you're actually working towards it. You know, it's like you can't just like manifest things and not do things, then it's not going to fall into place. You actually have to work uh, towards that goal that you're trying to achieve. But you can do anything. So like set those goals high and, and, and you can accomplish it as long as you're, you're trying to, you know, you're working towards it and you're disciplined and doing everything that you should do to, to get to that, that end point. Yeah, now the people like yourself who are at the top of their game, who obviously have, have made, making good money, but they also do it in service for others. Those are the people that you know, I want to surround myself with and, and they inspire me. So I appreciate you sharing you know, that with me. But I want to ask you, like, when Josh Emmett's at, at the best of his, his game, when you're the best fighter you can be, but you're also the best husband, you know, the best son, you know, what does that look like in your life? What, both in the octagon, octagon and outside of it? Um, yeah, it's just kind of doing what I've been doing. You know, it's like I, I just surround, like friends and family are everything to me. So it's like, um, I don't know. It's just like, it, it's hard for me because it's like, 
I just I just do what what you should you know it's like I, I, I try to be the the best husband I'm trying to like evolve as like a, a mixed martial artist a husband a son a, a brother a friend you know and it's like I have so many close friends you know like I like I don't even have enough fingers or toes like I could call some friends in in a, in a you know drop of the dime they would be there for me no questions asked and it because it goes both ways you know and they know I would be there but there's a lot of people that you know they have maybe one good friend do they even have one really close friend or who, who knows but it's just I think it's a a testament to my character just you ask any of my close friends or anyone that actually knows me and they'll they'll tell me how good of a or tell you how good of a person I am and because I'll do anything for my friends and family yeah so for you loyalty is one of the biggest oh, pillars in your life yeah yeah but it's, it's tough because these days that, that gets harder and harder to come by especially yeah. in sport yeah and, and that's why I have so many of my my close friends like we we have this big circle and I, I keep my my circle tight but it's like I've, I've been best friends with like all these people since like high school and stuff I have best friends from elementary school that I'm still in close contact with in college and things like that you know it's uh I don't know you, you don't see that much anymore like you're saying and and I we've been this everyone's been on this journey with me and it's like it's it's just awesome you know to I even had a, a friend that the last fight I was at in Austin Texas they were he sent me this crazy message and it was just about like all my amateur fights my regional fights all the UFC fights he's just sitting there looking around and he's like like just from that with all the friends that I have and just all these experiences and like just great moments and times just from fighting and it's like I give people like I don't know just like he was just so happy for me and it's just like it's neat to sit back and see the same people that have been to like all the fights around the world and stuff like that and they they come and continue to support me and it's like I don't know it's just it really is cool because like I'm so appreciative and, and grateful for everyone that comes out to support me so I always do like I'll do like after party mainly for them because I don't see anyone because it's work for me like during fight week and then I'll have like hundreds of people that come out you know no matter where where I'm fighting and then I do this like I'll do a big dinner or mainly just like a lounge or whatever it is a club just so I can see everyone and like yeah. visit with everyone and, and thank them all for coming out and supporting me because it's like it's a flight a hotel a ticket like a lot of money and these people like my friends and family like I call them like my family because it's like they just they come out no matter what and and just like to support me even though they're they're having a good time it's like a vacation and a, you know a entertainment event and stuff yeah, for them but but I'm the reason why and I, I'm making all these like these just like cool experiences and it's just like all these memories and stuff and we always have a blast wherever we are and it's it, it's really cool just to like kind of zoom out and like just like sit back and like just see where I've like come from to to where I'm at and you know I feel like we're still not even there even scratching the surface yet yeah know? no I think the you know the most successful business people and successful athletes they know the importance of getting the right people in your corner yeah. you know in, in fighting terms but growing up you tend to do a lot on your own you're you're in the gym on your own you, you know for me I'm on the field or in the gym on my own working on my own craft but as I've evolved and I've matured I've realized the importance of working with people who know more than me in certain areas so kind of how has that evolved in your life now that you're trying to chase a, a title getting the right people in your corner because some people just know more than you and they're yeah. subject matter experts that you need in your corner to learn and grow yeah and that's with what like i say i work with the best team and i'm not talking about like my team team alpha male i'm talking about like like my team so it's like i have you know, doctors, like the best dietitians in the country. Um, you know, I have my, my chiropractors, my acupuncturists, like my coaches, um, you know, just my support system. I, I feel like I have one of the best support systems and you'll hear people say like, oh, I have the best support system, but I truly believe I do. Like time and time again, going back to like everyone that comes out to support me, I'll have the biggest crowd wherever I am, like away. Like, of course I come here, it's like everyone, they're, they're cheering for like the Sacramento guy, but you go to any state or country whatever it is I'll have the biggest crowd you know like when I come out it's like because I literally have the biggest group there and so it's just like the the team I surround myself with and it's like I'm grateful for everything that's happened in my career with like the the 
ups and the downs and the setbacks and the you know the injuries because I'm finally in the place where I have everything like dialed in with the best team um, that and they all communicate with each other so it's like we're all working together to try to you know get me to to the top you know and win that world title and it's uh they're all investing so much in me you know it's and they have a helping hand with the, if, when, when and if you you raise that title that oh belt. yeah yeah 100 so i'm thinking about them so it's like you know they've invested so much in me so it's like you know even though it's an individual sport and i'm going in there to fight by myself i'm thinking about all of them and and then when i do become a world champion you know it's it, it, they help me get there. That's where it's the team sport and I have the best team and I'm talking about the team that helps me, uh, you know, get my hand raised and, and win that world title. What, I guess, what gives you the confidence to go into a fight head high, ready to fight, ready to win? You know, what, what's it like leading up to that, you know, those daily habits and behaviors that you can enter that octagon knowing your opponent 100% front to back with the confidence to go win this thing? I think it's just the preparation for me. It's like, I it's I, I prepare so hard and it's like I, I push myself so hard to like to like the absolute brink and then I try to go through another wall you know and, and push even harder because then I, I like I welcome um, getting tired I because you're gonna get tired in a fight like I, I welcome everything but it's like MMA it's it's that's what's so crazy about the sport it's so unpredictable and it's like you literally do not know what's gonna happen even though I <laughs> I, I'm at like the top before every fight, you know, and I've done everything I need to 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 go into that fight, and then I'm just trusting the process, you know, and, and I trust my coaches and um, you know from what they see from the outside. It's like I'm very coachable too, so it's like they always say it's like playing a video game, you know. So they'll they'll see certain things and they'll call out combos or they'll tell me what to do, and I hear them. I don't do it right away if it's something that you know the the opponent would if it's like you're a single, timing it yeah so i'm just waiting and then then i'll do it but they're saying like i i do everything they say i'm i can hear everything so i'm not one of those guys that has tunnel vision all this stuff like um i hear my college coaches like uh, dave pachenko from sac city he was my wrestling coach i have some of my high school coaches um that they go to the fights too and i can hear their voices like in the crowd yelling and it's just i don't know it's just uh does that fuel you mid-fight yeah. when you're hearing a you know a familiar voice where you know that guy probably has a big big influence in your life or means something to you and you're in the octagon knowing that that they're there they're in they're rooting for you? Yeah, and it's it's even going back to just all the fans like when they're cheering and stuff like I, I love that like it, it literally like fuels the fire it, like it it makes me even want to fight harder you know and like be entertaining and it's uh. Yeah, but especially going back to like when my coaches are saying things or my like college coaches and they they were there on the sidelines while I was wrestling and now they're they're you know trying to you know say what they can or just to encourage me or um, yeah it, it is motivating me you know like I said I'm, I'm thinking about everybody that's invested in me through my whole life or my career and what I have now and stuff like that so it's like yeah it definitely motivates the hell out of me. Has there ever been a fight where? Camp goes, you know, perfect to plan. You go, you go to the venue, whatever city you're fighting in, and then maybe a day or two, something happens out of the ordinary that doesn't always happen, and that you know takes you maybe off, off that plan. So then, pre-fight, it's not going according to plan. Has that happened? And if so, like, how have you bounced back and recentered yourself to just focus on the task and still perform at the best you can? Yeah, it's it's hard because it's like think of like games, like okay basketball baseball they have so many games so say they, they can have off day okay they lose they come back they play tomorrow and win but for fighting it's like whether you're fighting once a year twice a year it's like you have to be on that that night and that's not how that works so yeah it's happened a ton of times for me even my last fight it's just uh it's kind of like in the i don't know in the, in, in the warm-up room it's like i just i wasn't even feeling it like we were warming up and i just like it was just one of those nights you know what i mean but it's like I have to go out there and perform and and it's it's a fight at the end of the day. So it's like even if <laughs> if you yeah, if you don't feel like fighting like once once the the octagon cage door is locked and and you're in there and you know the bell rings and this guy's trying to like embarrass you in front of the world. He's trying to like take everything you've worked for. Um I don't care if I'm off or on. Like I'm going to I'm going to fight to 
you know, like the, the bitter end. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I've definitely had those. I've gone into fights a lot where I'm not like 100%, you know, having some issues going on, but that's most fighters, I think. Um, but it's, it's just the people, like I have this will to win and like there's nothing that's going to like stop me like just from an injury or not feeling the best. It's like I'm going to fight like I'll never give up. I'll never cower away. And you see that a lot in the UFC when you can tell when someone's breaking or they just want a way out and um, like I'll happily help them. I'll, I'll give them a way out if they if they're if they want a way out. I'll definitely end the fight, but I, I'll never quit or do that. You know, it's like you literally have to like stop me, you know, whether I've had compound fractures, uh, bones sticking out of the finger while I fought, I've torn my ACL and, and, and fought. I, I tore my ACL in the first 19 seconds of the first round. So I fought 14 minutes and 40 seconds on a torn ACL. So much more things were going on than just a complete tear. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's just my will to win. It's like, I know if I give up, like with injuries that come out later on, it's like, okay, that'll be okay. Everyone can understand. It's like, there's a reason why people don't, um, like in the NFL, they tear their ACL. They don't finish the set of downs or finish the quarter. They're carted off. Like I fought for, you know, 14 and a half minutes, one of the best guys in the world. And then we had the fight of the night. And then it was like uh, up there for fight of the year. Um, like, and people are like, oh, there's no way you did this. And then, and then, then, then the MRI came out and they're like, I don't see how we did this, you know, but it's just, it's just like, I will not quit. And, and I don't, I don't like, I'm not just saying that when I, like, I, I literally won't, you know what I mean? And, it, and I think that's shown with some of the things I've gone through and it's just, uh, because I'm trying to achieve greatness and it's within reach now. When that happened, what's that internal conversation like? Like, you know, you knew something was wrong in your knee, you know, you felt it. Yeah. And then you're having this conversation internally, like, I can't stop. Yeah. If I do, I lose the fight. Yeah. So what was going through your head in that moment? It, it, it's just like the, uh, yeah, you're talking to yourself, having these conversations. And then I, I just, I look at the clock and I'm just like, man, I can't, like, I would have to live with that. You know what I mean? Like, knowing that I gave up, I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm just like, fight your ass off, you got 14 and a half minutes, you'll be happy when you win, you know what I mean? And so I just like kind of bit down and luckily that he kept coming forward because you can't move that well. You've, you've torn your ACL, the, the stability is gone, like the pain was there and um, yeah, I still just, I just had to fight. Then with, after each round, I was like, only 10 more minutes left. And then after the second round, only five more minutes left. You know, I just keep trying to like pump myself up and uh, that's kind of what got me through. And then, you know, I got the win and I was like, oh, I'll deal with this later. I'll, I'll get it fixed. And then, you know, another, you know, s journey starts. It's like the rehab. And it's like, that was harder than that, that prep for that fight because it was an 18 month, um, like training camp, whatever you want to call it, like busting my ass every single day. I lived in Vegas for two months, just doing rehab twice a day, physical therapy. Uh, I mean, yeah, PT and then strength and conditioning, just nonstop eating good and just recovery after recovery. And it's, yeah, it's just, that's what people don't see, you know. Um, no, those are so Quinn. I've thought about it, especially with UFC fighters, you go through an injury, you've done a couple cheeks, orbital bones, you've done your ACL, and those put you out, you know, extended months. And during those months, it's not like you have a fight on the horizon that you're working for, you know, you're just working to, to get back healthy, hoping that you get signed another fight. Yeah. So during those months, how do you, you know, how do you keep going? What, what's keeping you driven? Um, is it, I know I'm gonna have a fight. Is it the confidence in yourself? Is it, I'm not gonna stop until I accomplish the goals that I originally set? You know, what are you thinking about during those down times? Yeah, pretty much. And then it's just rehab. So I'm just like, I, since I'm going through it, it it's kind of hard for me to kind of know what's going on. My wife has said this a lot, like she's, uh, it's stressful for her, obviously, because she's she's not going through it. She's seeing from the outside. But then for me, I'm just like, I'm just going through the process. Like, okay, I need to do PT. I need to do this. I need to, like, when I had, like, the orbital stuff, it's like, you know, I was seeing, like, vestibular therapists. I was seeing cranial sacral therapists. I was doing everything I needed to. Um, so I'm just trying to get better so I can get back to, to fighting, you know, and with bones and everything, it's like bones will heal with time, but it's like I had a lot more than that going on. But it's just like, I, I know deep down inside, like it's like, I don't know, 
I will get better over time. I will get back to fighting. I, it makes me focus on other things. You know, it makes me get better in different areas that I, I you know, maybe I, I, I couldn't use my knee. So then I'm, I'm doing other stuff. I'm working on upper body stuff. I'm just, I'm working on a lot of different things, you know. So even though it's, <laughs> kind of sounds bad but it's like a blessing in disguise every time I've had something bad happen to me it, it leads me to something bigger and better or focus on this a uh, certain aspect of my game or my body or whatever it is and then I, I come back better than ever and uh, I just you know it's everything just works out for a reason and I and I 100% believe that you know what I mean it's like you need certain doors to close for other doors to open Absolutely. and it's just you know I like I'm going to get there. I will be a world champion, and it's like it's just taken me a long, you know, just longer than I anticipated. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, before I did my ACL, I almost had somewhat of like an identity crisis because I just thought of myself as a rugby player. But then the injury happened, COVID happened. I had 20 months to number one rehab, get back on the field, and then get ready for my next competition. But it was in those 20 months where I think I really, really understood who I was as a person and started to build interests and, and habits outside of the sport. You know, for you, did those injuries allow you to explore other parts of your life that aren't just fighting? Yeah, no, and that's like with, well, now it's just like, I just had a fight, so like uh, we were talking about earlier, just building my mom's place, you know what I mean? But yeah, other stuff during the ACL surgery and during COVID, uh, everyone was unsure what was gonna happen. You know, I was like, man, am I gonna be able to fight? We didn't, we didn't know what was going on, and then I'm, grateful for Dana being like the guy that kind of, he set the, the blueprint for like the COVID protocol for sports, you know, in the NBA, NFL, everyone kind of followed suit. But yeah, no, I, I like dove down in more into like crypto and NFTs and doing all these other stuff. So it gave me a time to sit back and all I did was do like, I went down the rabbit hole and just like so much like research and studying and things like this and got involved into stuff like that. And then, you know, I'm a part of a few businesses. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it just gives me more time to, uh, you know, focus on different ventures and stuff like that and, and not just be, you know, a, a fighter. Whereas some people are just fighters and that's all they have. But with the platform, with like financially, some of the money that we can make, if I just invest it wisely and stuff, that's what I'm trying to accomplish too, just setting myself and family up for the future. And it, you know, that, that did help, you know, having downtime, like in between sessions of PT and strength and conditioning, just, you know, researching and reading and focusing on different things. Mentally, like what's different about you today than when you just started the sport in regards to, you know, emotional maturity and, and how you approach the game and how you look at the game, you know, where are you at these days? and What's different? Yeah, I would say just, yeah, just becoming more mature and just like going through different, like, I don't know, just adversity while fighting, like out of the, out of the octagon. It's like, it's just, it's made my, my mental game even stronger. And it's like, you learn a lot about yourself during these, these like tough times, you know what I mean? And so um, I always said like, my, you know, my mentality is like my strongest attribute. It's like, you know, I, I just feel like no one can mentally break me and, and I'm like, I'm literally willing to go through anything in order to get my hand raised and achieve what I'm trying to achieve and accomplish. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, sitting back and believing like everything happens for a reason. That, that's one of the things because I would be so set on one particular thing and then if it didn't happen, I would be like so upset and so pissed, you know, it's like, um, but then just sitting back and, and watching how things have played out for me. Okay, I didn't get this fight or I didn't get this job, um, but then it led me here, you know, and then I, I, I think back if I would have got that job, like I, I was actually, I was applying for the like, Sacramento Police, like right out of college and um, it was during like all the budget cuts. I, was, I did the oral boards, I, I finished everything. I was waiting for the academy to start and then because of the budget cuts, they just stopped everything. So I did not get in. I was so pissed, you know. But then it led me to this. Like, if I would have got became a police officer, <laughs> I wouldn't be fighting right now. You know, it's like everything kind of like, it just goes back to everything. It happens for a reason. Like, if you ride and open a gym in Sacramento, I wouldn't be fighting. I didn't have the money to go, like, travel to a different state or uh, to pursue this this crazy dream of mine that took over a decade to get to the UFC. Like, there's so many different factors and stuff that have played out, and, um, 
Yeah, it's just so I, I literally just going back to for like the young me to who I am now. It's just like besides maturity, it's just yeah, it's just sit back and you have to be patient too. You have to be patient and and, and just as long as you're working towards what you want to accomplish, like it'll come. It may take longer than uh, you expect, but you know it'll it'll come. If you don't mind me asking, like, what's been the biggest low point in your life, biggest setback that you've had to dig yourself out of? Out of. Ah, oh, it's tough, man. I, I don't know whether it's injuries. It's uh, my father passed away. My older brother passed away. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know. It's just uh, there's a lot of things, but it's just like staying positive, um, just being a good person, working hard, um, knowing what you want to want to do in life, and like, I don't know. I really don't know. Like. Injuries were tough, but there were some other things like when my my older brother was murdered. That was like that was a tough thing. It was like a, a pain that I I never felt before, you know. So it's. Uh, Do you fight for him now? Yeah, no. I he he was he was in taekwondo and everything like that. So I always bring his belt. You know, he was a black belt. Um, yeah, I always bring his belt with me and to the fights and things like that. But it's uh, yeah. There's I don't know a lot of things that tough. I don't I don't have one one single thing but that's that's definitely way way up there who inspires you the most Probably my mom you know my mom my wife just everything my mom did you know for me as a, a child just sweetest lady just like i said she's uh she's awesome and she she worked so hard to do everything she could for us and then like my wife is like one of my if not my biggest supporter and i couldn't be doing this without her too you know she like takes care of my schedule like literally everything it's like i'm so blessed and uh, yeah, so those two are like, yeah, those are my, my, my yeah, driving factors and the biggest motivation and biggest supporters. And so when you win, they're smiling. That, oh, 100%. That's everything yeah, for you. Yeah, they're, they're happy that the yeah. fight's over. Yeah. You know, cause <laughs> it's a stressful, stressful time for them. But, uh, and, and a lot of my good friends and stuff. It's not like a lot of people are going and like, like I said, it's, a, it's an event, you know, but it's, it's different. It's work for me. It's like... I don't know what's gonna happen, and there's like my mom is stressed the day I'm like, hey mom, I'm fighting in eight weeks. It just starts, and then it's like fight week. It gets closer and closer. She she, she can't even concentrate because she's so freaked out, you know. And they've seen bad things happen, and it's like I always relate it to like it's like hopping into a, a car and flooring it into a tree with no seatbelt. Like I don't know what's gonna happen. You hope you hope it like it works out for the best, but I really have no idea. It's like that unknowing, uh, like. That's, that's what makes MMA crazy too, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, they're, they're definitely happy when I'm winning and not that they like the fighting, but it's like, they're going to support me no matter what. And they've always been there. They'll always be there for me. Um, you know, my wife is like, she wants me to like quit on my own terms or like decide when I, if I wanted to stop fighting right now, she'd, she'd be hundred percent fine with it. She'd be so supportive, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough on them. Like me, I'm not I'm not really worried about it. I go in there, I'm not nervous. But I've had on the other side, like friends fighting and like my heart's racing out of control. And it's like I'm moving, I can't do anything, you know. But so I, I totally get where they're coming from. But it's, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, no. You know, I, I, I always have this conversation with myself of, you know, what I wish I knew when I was just starting out, when I was in middle school, high school. And the only thing I can do now is is help give that knowledge and experience to the guys who are at that age. So from your perspective, you know, what do you wish you knew and what advice would you give younger athletes and not just athletes, but younger people trying yeah. to chase their dream? Yeah. And that's, that's the same thing with like, yeah, I wish I know what I know now back in, you know, college and stuff or even younger. It's like, but, but that's not how that works. So it's, uh, yeah, but I, I always help a lot of like the guys that are younger and like with my weight cut and they know how like regimented I am and how, how tough my weight cut is and, and how I get down there and make it look easy. So I'm always like giving guidance on like, you know, people's water loading protocols, their diet, what they need to do to, you know, get their weight down and just kind of just kind of help in any way I possibly can. But even just younger athletes or just people in, um, you know, in, in, in school, relationships, careers, whatever it is, it always just goes back to just being a good person, being consistent, being disciplined, um, you know, and just being in it for the long haul. Like, 
sometimes things happen where it's like you get in and you go to the top right away or you like the get rich stuff we talked about earlier but that's usually not how it works so you have to just you have to like write out goals and work towards them you know and and like be in it for the long haul and 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 have a purpose like why are you doing this like what is your why what do you you know just so much stuff goes into accomplishing something you know what i mean and and it's uh you know and being around good people and like-minded people and if if you want to do something like surround yourself with good people and ask questions and you know volunteer or you know do what you can internships depending on what you want to do you know it's like if you really want to do something like dive deep into it and and maybe you'll find out you don't want to do this um, or you love it and, and you'll know you know a better way to get there have have mentors i've ha I have several mentors that have helped me out so much throughout my life you know and it's uh it's just cool to be around like yeah just successful people and just good people yeah no i mean you're a product of your environment yeah. you couldn't have said it any better and I guess me surrounding myself with guys like you and other athletes and successful people helps just makes me more addicted to, to becoming the best version of myself. And when I was a kid, I used to always, you know, say I was a freshman in college, maybe not playing as much as I thought I would. I would tell myself, oh, you know, when I'm a sophomore, yeah. I'm going to be playing a lot. Yep. When I'm a junior, I'm going to be a leader. You know, maybe when I'm a senior, I'm going to be te team captain. Yeah. But then I thought, now, if I just, you know, focused on coming into the workouts every day, just trying to have a great workout and getting a little stronger and going to the field session every day and just trying to get a little bit better. And then you compound that day after day, week after week, season after season. You know, I'm trying to tell people that you will become a completely different person if you focus on the present moment and just winning each day. Yeah. And that's that's some, you know, advice I want to give to everybody because I think it's so important. And that's another thing, too. It's like when I'm like fighting or I have an opponent or something, I'm like obsessed with it, you know, like I, I really am like obsessed with learning, getting better. And, and just like you're saying, like you touched on it, living in the present. That's what a lot of people don't do. It's like they're always concerned about the future, the future. Like I want to do this. I want to do this. Like enjoy it. You know what I mean? Because it's like it's like the, the past. You can't do anything about it. And it's like the future is like, is it really there yet? You don't know. Like maybe you won't get there. Maybe, it, you know, it's just like the past. You can't do anything about it. So it's like enjoy what you're doing because we get caught up with so much stuff going on and all like the social media and stimulus and different things like that it's just or stimuli and it's just like it's so much like where people where they're just so concerned about working or making money and doing this for later on like enjoy your time with your friends your family like you know what i mean like life is so short you know what i mean and it's like people take things for granted and then when someone's gone or you you know it's like Oh, I wish I would have done this. It's like just do it now. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> and try to be happy. You know, and it, and like gratitude is a big thing too. So it's like you know, just being grateful for what you have. Like if if like I, I practice this thing. I work with a mind coach too. So it's like even gratitude. He has me every day. I wake up. I do a hundred things I'm grateful for, and I say it out loud. Like, and I I could go on and say a thousand things. Like, so you take it in, and it's like I'm grateful for so much, and it's like the positive so much more outweighs like the negative maybe you have a few things going on that are negative but it's like you know it's it's like the I don't know, I'm just blessed and, and grateful for so much more so don't let the negative stuff hinder your your success or what you're trying to accomplish yeah we had we had a motto at our mindset at cal rugby which was grateful for everything entitled to nothing and you know the coaches are just stressing you know you're not owed anything in life nothing. everything in life is either what's given to you or what you, you work in you're earned. So, you know, you got to go through with a little more gratitude and, and, and it's simple as saying thank you to every single person yeah. or treating each and every person top to bottom of the totem, totem yeah. pole with respect. Yeah. You know, you just, I think, I think the whole world could have a, a bit more gratitude in their life and, mm -hmm. and not have a sense of entitlement that things are going to just be given to them. Yeah. And once you start living that on a day-to-day -day basis, I think you start to do things a little more outwardly for other people rather than just for yourself yeah yeah and and it's yeah no 100 percent. like i i agree with that and it's it's like you you also learn about a lot about someone that's like how they treat someone or talk to people and stuff who cares what they do if they're down here it's like they're still good people they're still working like it's like yeah it goes a long way and you start attracting better things and it's like you're just you're just happier you know it's like yeah. so how important is routine for you i mean you do this 100 
yeah. hundred things you're grateful for every day. You know, what else is incorporated in your day that helps you just, you know, feel the best and, and you're in, you're in the zone. Yeah. Especially like now I'm like, since I just fought, I always take like six to eight weeks off, like just to mentally and physically kind of decompress because like, I, I don't care what anyone says. I'm like, you cannot be in fight shape year round. Like it, it takes so much stress on your, your, your body. Um, so I, I always do that. Just like enjoying myself now, I always like decompress. Like my wife and I are huge on traveling and like we're foodies and we like good wine and stuff. So I do a little bit of that, but then like, obviously when I get back to like my regimen and stuff, it's just, it's, it, it's so like structured and it's like repetitive, you know, we're almost like when I'm in camp, you know, I've, I've talked to my wife, I'm like, we have a boring life, but I, but I don't, but it's like, cause I do the same thing every day. It's like, like I get up at the same time every day. I, I do like my lemon water, sea salt and, and uh, honey. And then I have my coffee, then I make my breakfast and whether it's like emails or whatever I'm doing and then go into practice. And I, I set my schedule um, at the beginning of camp and, and I just stick to it. Like all my workouts, like I have, you know, alarms on my phone, like exactly when to eat, when to do this, supplementation, like then I, I focus so much on recovery. So for like every workout that I have, it's like I almost do like a recovery session. So I'm big on restore hyper wellness. I go in like the 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 cryo chamber. I do the the hyperbaric chamber. Um, all their like red light. I I, I do everything. I, I I see my chiropractor that does a lot of like soft tissue work and ART. I see him once a week. My PT twice a week. My acupuncturist. Like my masseuse. Like. It's just nonstop on my day off. You know, sometimes my wife and I go to Asha Bath House and we're doing like the cold plunges and things like that. And it's just like, it's the same thing day after day, week by week until I get to that, that fight, you know, and then I just know like the end goals, you know, success and getting my hand raised and I'm doing whatever I have to. If the door shut, I'm going through the window. If that's shut, I'm coming through the damn chimney or the roof you know what I mean like I'm doing anything and, and everything necessary to to accomplish like my goals and but it is repetitive I'll, I'll eat the same thing if I have to I don't care what something tastes like if they're like this is <laughs> this is good for you and it's gonna get you this like I would eat the same thing every day every meal like I, I wouldn't care you know what I mean <laughs> Ed Mila said it best consistency is more important than motivation just because yeah. everybody's motivated to do something of course this kid wants to go do something great, but yeah. can they be consistent with their, their habits and their behaviors every single day? Because that compounds over weeks, months, years, that, that ultimately is gonna dictate the outcome. Yeah, and, and sleep is such a big thing and too. Sleep, and sleep, absolutely. And it's hard even though you have things going on in your mind. It's like, for me, I wish I could like shut it off, but I can't, especially when I'm in camp, I'm just like, like I said, I'm obsessed with my opponent. I'm thinking about like, Oh, I need to do this. I need, I used to wake up, like if I wake up at like three in the morning, I'm like, shit, I should go run or something, you know, like do something that he's not, but like sleep is a huge part of recovery and stuff. So I, you know, when I'm in camp, it's like, I try to get to sleep before 10 o'clock. And so it's like, I start dimming the lights at eight o'clock at nine o'clock. I'm not watching any TV. I'm not looking at my phone. Like I'll do like Epsom soak. I'll do my red light. And then, you know, get ready for bed and I'm trying to be asleep before 10 because no matter what I wake up at the same time you know and then but it's 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 tough like you have to make that like a priority as well like recovery and sleep and everything and and that's just as important if not more important than you know like the work itself because otherwise if you're just go 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 you're not getting enough rest or sleep it's like it's like you're burning a candle at both ends you know it's like eventually that's going to you know, affect you in a, probably a negative way. So it's like, like you said, I'm so consistent and so regimented and structured um, to where it's almost like boring. You know, how many more years do I have? You know, I, I feel like I have legitimately like maybe like another year to make a run at the title, but I have like a, you know, I, I think I have like a good like, I don't know, three, four years left in my, my MMA career. So it's like, since I've done this most of my life, what's another three, four years? It's nothing, you know, nothing especially if I accomplish what I set out to. And then, you know, then I can relax and do things that are more exciting and entertaining after my career's up or just focus my energy um, elsewhere, you know, in business or something. Your name's everywhere. Lights are on you. Potentially fighting in a, in a, in a belt, a title fight. 
what's keeping you grounded in who you are, even though there's all this talk around you, Josh Hammett could be the, you know, featherweight champion, you know, how, how are you staying grounded? I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, I, I'm the same person I've always been, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's weird in a sense where it's like, I'm the same, my, my circle of friends, like, they forget, like, when, when I'm out somewhere, I'm like, oh, J Josh Hammett, can I get a picture with you, or this and this, or like, it's odd to them because, they've known me for most of my life. And so sometimes they forget like what I do, but it's uh, people's perception changes of me, but I'm the same person. So I will never change. Um, and, that, and that's, just, that's just, just who I am. Okay, big picture now. Of course the belt, but you know, what else are you chasing? Is it the legacy? Is it the belt? Is it you're trying to chase the best Josh Emma that you can create? You know, what's going through your head? Yeah, it's like like going back to you know wanting to inspire people. Like, like who knows? Like I'm a select few. Like there's there's 500 people in the world. Like men, women, all weight classes on the UFC roster. There's like eight billion people in the world. I'm a small fraction. It's like I was never the best at this, or I was never the national champion, the state champion, this and that. It, it doesn't matter as long as going back to like my work ethic and being consistent, disciplined, being a good person, working towards something like. I, I really want to give people hope and inspire others and you know yeah legacy is great but it's like first and foremost it's uh, becoming a world champion the best fighter on the planet um, in the featherweight division and, and, and I will accomplish that. Where else in your life do you think you could grow because I think you don't grow unless you fail you don't you don't grow unless you know you screw things up where do you see yourself in the big picture uh, and where you want to develop yeah, I think it's everywhere. It's going back to just mentors and stuff like that. Um, I'm surrounded by a lot of successful people and um, just learning from them. You know, it's like it's like MMA. I, I'm always learning. It's like, you know, you're just like a sponge. I'm just soaking everything up. And it's just, uh, yeah, I think like everyone can improve on everything in their life and become a better person. And it's just it's just it's just that whether it's like really really anything you know what I mean like I I will continue to like evolve as or get better as like a husband a, you know a son a brother like things like this and, and especially in business that's where you know I would like to just learn from these uh, these mentors that are successful in their expertise or their profession and you know take what I can and, and try to apply it to um, fighting or you know whether I partner with them later on and yeah it's just you have to constantly evolve and and uh, do better and get better. What does success look like to you? Success, for, I, I guess you could say like number one, just being happy. You know, like being happy. A lot of people are not happy, or they're always. Uh, so that's something you have to work on. You know, just being like, just happier. You know what I mean? But success is just being happy, being surrounded by uh, the people you love. Um, but then it depends. Some people look at fine like finances is like success some people look at being happy um, it just depends like what your goal is but for me I feel like I'm a really happy person I like my wife and I we love our life I'm happy with my friends and family so for me success would be becoming a world champion uh, just financially being kind of set up you know what I mean because I know money doesn't buy happiness but if, if you're a happy person in general it just allows you to do a lot more and uh, yeah, make more of it, you know, so. How would you describe Josh Emma in one word? Hmm, that's a good one. I don't know, I'd have to think about this. I don't know. It's a few words that go through my mind, but I don't know. I don't know. For me, it's relentless, because I just, the way you fight and the way you live your life is just with a relentless attitude and, and mindset like there is no stopping yeah i think just like yeah being resilient and relentless and yeah it's uh yeah no i like that yeah last one and i and i have to know post cut you know you weigh in you make your weight what are you eating same thing i've been eating uh all, all fight week, so it's like I have. Okay, uh, you don't change and have a, a cheat no, meal or anything. No, no, because then, then for the day that you have to be on, I've been eating this certain way for eight weeks, and then I make the weight. And then there are people that like they're having milkshakes, ice cream. They're they're going out to like a they're going out to a restaurant, a steakhouse. Oh, I've seen 
McGregor, huge steaks, or other fighters, I want a big burger with fries, blah, 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 but. I'll do all that after I win the fight, yeah. but not before I like, not before I have to go out there and perform to my best, you know, so I, going back to, I work with perfecting athletes. It's, it's like the best, the best dietitians in the country. They were the, the dietitians for the USA boxing team. They work with like world championships in the, or world champions in the UFC. They work with all these like world champions um, in boxing too. The, the best of the best boxers and UFC fighters. And um, they come out with me fight week. I work with them all, obviously all through my camp and then fight week. Um, they make all my meals, like all my juices, my supplements, do everything. I'm getting body work. It's like a concierge service. And then, um, yeah, after I just eat more of what, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I basically, I'm, I'm eating these smaller meals. They're actually pretty big and, and it gives me enough energy and gets my weight down and I feel great through fight, fight week even. And then we just, we just eat, eat more, bigger portions, but not to where I'm, I'm like bloated or feel yeah. uncomfortable because, so I just eat a little bigger and then after I win, then it's like, it's a, it's a free, it's a free for all, whatever I can get, whatever's the, the closest <laughs> restaurant or whatever, like, I don't know, I'm, I love food. I'm like the biggest like foodie. And so it's not like bad stuff, but like, we, like we like good You're food. Yeah, but it's like, whatever. Then I'll go to the steakhouse is like, like every cuisine. It's like, you know, anything like, yeah. That's why I always tell people here in Sacramento, I'm like, I'm like, you tell me the cuisine and I got a spot for you. But it's like, I just, I just love food, you know, like I'm not like yeah, good restaurant. So good food. I'm not eating like fast food and stuff like that. And, but I, but I do have not so much as I do have a sweet tooth, I guess you could say, but not like candy. It's like baked goods. Like I do like ice creams and cookies and like all that stuff. It's like, I'll say my downfall, but all like after I win, then I'll just kind of go crazy for a little while but then i'm like every time i'm like i'm not gonna do this because like i feel so good when i'm in like i'm eating so good for eight to ten weeks and then after i win i go eat all this stuff or i have like you know or i'm drinking and stuff or like eating out and they're not using sea salt they're using table salt so then you're all puffy and then i'm eating ice cream and sugar and then i feel like shit, you know and i'm like why am i doing this but you know, it's, <laughs> then you get back on yeah, then I, then I get back on track after I start, I feel horrible for, you know, a week or two. And then I, I was like, I can't do this anymore, so you know, or it's like, I want something so bad. Like I like, cause I think, cause you can't have it. So I'm like craving this certain food. And then once I can have it, I'm like, oh, I don't want that. You know what I mean? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, to comment on this video. Let me know what type of people you guys want to see next. Um, whether it's more athletes, is it a businessman or woman? Is it a health and wellness expert? Um, anybody, I'd love to share their story. I love sharing stories about chasing a dream and together let's change the world.